Liam Scales and Jack Taylor come in? Yeah, like Dara, Dara Lennon's had an excellent season. Obviously, Middlesbrough getting to the playoffs, he was the leader for them, and you know, he deserves a call up for sure. And um, Liam Scales has benefited probably from Ryan Manning not being, able, not being able to join up with us, and uh, he's you know, he's had an excellent season at Aberdeen, having played the previous year with Celtic, and obviously gives you the option as a left footed player who can naturally play in the back three, so he gives it gives us a different option, uh, covers the left side, and obviously Jack Taylor um, has added his extra cover in midfield, obviously a couple of the midfielders we've called in have had some in- injuries, so we have to have extra cover in that area, and he's had, he's on the verge of a move himself now, you know, back to the, up, up, up the back up the levels, and there's a lot of interest, and he'll go he'll go for, you know, a, a sizable fee, I'm sure, and uh, he's done very well. And Shane Duffy, a difficult call, but one note I suppose you have to take in balance. He hasn't played. It's it's difficult not to have him in this one. Not really, no. I think and listen, Shane. I spoke to him last night. He listen. He's, he's a terrific attitude, um, and you know, he, I'm sure he'll get the move that he needs now very shortly, and. He's not managed to play a league game this year because Fulham have not had any injuries and they've had a remarkable year. And uh, I'm in communication with Shane. He'll, he'll play a big part in our future. Shane does a very a big loss too. A real loss of energy up front that he brings to this Irish side. Uh, a big miss to the team. <laughs> Listen, yeah, there's players that are missing, but you know, I'd rather focus on the players that we have. I'm happy with the squad that we have. Chido, he's bred the fresh air. We love him. Gives us, gives us that energy and uh, he's obviously electric pace and gives us something, an outlet. But we've got a lot of good players in the squad. We're happy with what we've got. Chido, you know, had a high grade tear in his hamstring. Difficulty, just we tried everything with him. You know, his rehab is so professional, but it just wasn't to be. Uh, we have, we have uh, very good forwards in the squad. We're happy with what we've got. And we're looking for a, a big performance in Greece, that's, that's the ambition. I want to talk to you about Gavin. It's been a difficult year for here. His first, I suppose, real full year as a pro. Obviously got relegated, difficult as a goalkeeper in a, in a relegated side. Um, do you think it'll do him good to get away and have a break with the Irish team and uh, rebuild his confidence a little bit maybe? <coughs> well, regardless, he's always... He's, you know, I don't, I don't feel his confidence. I felt his performances were good when he was being left out. Um, I don't see his confidence been knocked, and he's a very focused individual. He's always perform perform well for us. A very good performance against France. He always perform well for us, and we've got a good goalkeeping group with Gavin, Quivey, and, and Mark. And Mark played very well against Everton last week. So, I think it's not, it's very hard for anyone's career to have an absolute upward trajectory, and you're gonna have knocks and setbacks, and how you respond to them then is is critical. Just one person who might play a big role, Matt Doherty, obviously with no Seamus. He's one of your senior internationals as well, but he's been lacking a lot of games. Yeah. Is that a good thing in a way because he comes in very fresh or uh, and ready to go, no injuries as well, or just uh, lacking a little bit of match practice too? Yeah, no, listen, we'd, of course we prefer if Matt was playing regularly. You know, I think it's not ideal that he hasn't been playing regularly and he knows that, we know that, you know, it's not a perfect scenario. But on the plus side, a lot of the players in the Championship have finished six weeks ago by the time we play Greece, but he, he's training right up to this week. They play, they play Seville on Sunday. So he, he'll play Seville on Sunday, join up with us Monday uh, without a break. So he'll be, he'll be trained, he's trained every day. There's nothing replicates playing matches and match fitness will be short for him. But he won't have had that long break. So there is, there is some, uh, some, so, so, some pros there. Listen, I have to ask you about Evan as well. His trajectory this year has been incredible the rise of Evan Ferguson people comparing him to the likes of Harry Kane and talk about moves to Manchester United for crazy money now we know he's probably not at that stage yet but from what you've seen and you've dealt with so many young players over your career what do you think his potential is? I think it's still early days for Evan his career is in his infancy I think he's um, you know he's, he's really excelled and he's been exceptional and it's credit to him he's really applied himself brilliantly Taken in a stride and nothing phases him, and uh, he's showing a lot of talent. And it was great for him to get his first goal against Latvia at home in his first start. And hopefully, he can take that into this window and have a profitable window. It'd be great for us. 
listen, talk to me about the heat. Are you a fan of it? And talk to me about Turkey and about the value of going out there for nine days, putting the lads through their paces and that heat because they're really going to need to have those few days to acclimatise for, for, for the Greek game. Yeah, when we seen the, the group we were we were put into it. We knew it was a tough group and then we said, right, well, before the fixtures were finalised, we didn't want Greece in June, obviously for obvious reasons, but that's the way it turned out. So then once it happens, you've just got to make sure your preparations are the best they can possibly be for that scenario. Obviously, with the six-week gap with the championship, which is problematic, uh, we, we organised the, the, the camp in Bristol last week, which was, which was important for the players. And um, they will have programmes this week, individual programmes they're working on, they come into the camp. And the good thing about Turkey is that it replicates the, you know, the conditions we're going to experience in Greece and we'll have that for more than a week leading into the Greek game, which is important. And we've got to make sure we're ready, because Greek, Greece will be ready. Their leagues finished right up till la this weekend and last weekend and they'll be ready. And we've got to make sure that we are. This is just a couple of questions to finish off. Well, what do you make of Greece so far? The last six, two wins, two draws, two losses. So... If you form, I suppose, do you think it's you, you're going there looking to get a win? Now we need to have a, you know, we're trying to in pursuit of a big away win. They in the Nations League last June, they won their four games in 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 the in the June window, and they beat Northern Ireland twice. And they're quite an expansive team. They like possession-based team, four-three-three, overlapping fullbacks, and um, they already have a playoff, so they've nothing to lose, and they'll have a right go uh, at home. And, but for us, we want to try and create our own big moments and have, have to try and get the victory that we, we, we desire. Do you have to tweak that slightly with the heat, taking into account of that, that the players may not, their levels might not be at that level of the Greek players who might be able to you know, get in and around you a bit more? <laughs> well, we, we'll get good practice to that in, in Turkey and we'll work on, work on everything we need to work on and make sure we're ready. Thank you. Thank you, Will. Best luck, Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Sean.